everyone, it's Alyssa here from my kitchen for another edition of Book Cooks. We are on week two of the CSA box, thanks to the Green Team and Flocktown Farm. And I will show you everything that I got in my box. Do a little video insert here. I got so much great stuff this week. Just another fun unboxing of beautiful greens. There's the, the dill, the radishes, the turnips, the green onions. Um, I subbed out my parsley for lacinato kale. Lacinato kale is my favorite kind of kale, especially for making kale chips in the oven or the air fryer. I just love the texture, that bumpy texture lends itself very well to making kale chips and they kind of the little bumps hold a lot of the seasoning in there. So if you are skeptical of kale chips or if you love kale chips, try it with the lacinato kale. So that was my swap for the parsley. I don't use that much parsley in my cooking. Did get a lot of dill and we did have dill as our spice of the month a couple of months ago. Um, so I'll share some of those recipes again. If you didn't get that pamphlet, I'll put some of the links down below because it's a lot of dill, but I'm pretty excited to um, just have some fresh herbs. It's the season for fresh herbs. I'm so excited. So we got a lot of great stuff. Um, also the big head of romaine, I'm just gonna chop that into a giant bowl and make a delicious fresh salad, probably with the radishes. Um, if you did not try the radish recipe from last week, you should give it a try this week. It was delicious. I'm definitely going to make it again. And it was really simple. You don't even need the measurements. You could just eyeball it. Totally awesome. Um, so this week, the recipe that I'm doing has the turnips and they, um, we're just soaking in a big giant bowl of water. That's how I like to clean them. I like to just get a nice bowl of water and stick them in there, get if there's any remaining dirt or anything on there, it gets, them, gets that off. Um, but I'll show you some recipe inspiration for the things in this box in case you're a little stumped. And I'll put the names of the recipes in the box below, wherever you're watching, as well as the name of the cookbook. But you can also, if you don't have access to these cookbooks, maybe they get checked out or there's no digital version or you don't have it at home, you can probably just Google the name of the recipe and find something similar. Um, but please come check out our cookbook collection. So let me grab the cookbooks and just show you some of the recipes that would be perfect for this week's box. Some big ones, we got some good ones too. The first one is an Otolenghi book, and it is plenty more. And I found I found plenty of recipes that would be so good for this box. All right, let me let me tell you what would be great. Get some inspiration in case you need it. Um, I actually bought the ingredients for this, and when I saw this recipe, I regretted turning in my parsley. <laughs> because it does require parsley and next month's spice which is or herb which is mint um, this is an orange and date salad so it's um, a dressing that's comprised of lemon juice orange blossom water cinnamon fennel seeds garlic very fragrant um, and the salad has oranges dates radishes red onion arugula lettuce cilantro parsley and mint so we a lot of these things are in this box and and or were available for the CSA swap if you go into the store every Saturday morning and do swaps. So this orange and date salad sounds amazing, refreshing, delicious. So I'm actually going to give it a try. I went to the grocery store after work and I got oranges and dates and uh, I still need to get cilantro and parsley, but, and mint. Oops. All right, <laughs> sorry, parsley. Um, another salad that I thought sounded amazing and I went and I got some feta as well. Um, I didn't get any figs. I will wait to do the salad. We have a fig tree at my parents' house, so I will wait until we get fresh figs from there. But it's a caramelized fig, orange, and feta salad on a bed of arugula. Arugula can be a little peppery. It's really nice. It's got a good texture, which is just the opposite of the soft oranges 
and the soft figs and the feta, it brings it all together. It sounds delicious. Let's see, uh, stuffed zucchini. I believe some people are starting to get some zucchini in their box. Um, I think those were the, the very large ones. So the zucchini is stuffed with um, a rice filling with onion, cumin, allspice, mint, tomato, um, lemon zest, cilantro leaves, and you have your, your zucchini and you cook it in a liquid of allspice, pomegranate, molasses, super fine sugar, dried mint, garlic cloves. It's, it's wonderful. And if you um, don't know how to make pomegranate molasses, I actually did that once here on Book Cooks. Um, it's one of the recipes for wings. If I find it on our YouTube, I will link it below as well. That was an excellent recipe, the pomegranate molasses chicken wings. So good. Definitely worth a remake. Um, and then braised kale with crispy shallots. This sounds awesome. Um, it's, it's, you know, you dredge the shallots very thinly sliced. You dredge them in just a little bit of flour, whatever kind of flour you use, and you get them really crispy. And it's just a, a nice salad that has some sesame oil, sesame seeds, um, that's really in garlic. It just kind of, you just kind of let it shine like that. So it sounds delicious and simple. Um, and it's like, a, it's a warm kind of braised kale dish. And then the other one, this one sounds amazing. I hope somebody makes this and you tell me how wonderful it is. It is a ricotta and rosemary bread pudding and it uses the turnips. Um, so it's, it's just a big, big loaf of sourdough bread, whole milk, heavy cream, rosemary, nutmeg, eggs, turnips, ricotta, parmesan, chives, and you, yeah, you blanch the turnip slices in the water and then you, okay, so you blanch the turnip in the water and then you layer it with the ricotta and the cream and the, and the bread. So actually it's just like a layer of texture because bread pudding, I guess, can be kind of like mushy, but these turnips, they're a little hearty, they're a little earthy. That's great, the rope that goes with the rosemary. I don't know, I don't really know. I've never tried anything like this. I've never tried a savory bread pudding, especially one that incorporates a root vegetable, but it makes sense to me. And someone's gotta try this, let me know, okay. The next one, this cookbook is called Skillet Love by Ann Byrne. And what did I find in here? Uh, skillet Tartens, which is um, another like flat bread recipe. They're like little toasts. And this has a couple of different toppings that you can do. Among them, one of them is a zucchini and mint. So you just shave the zucchini really thin into ribbons and you serve it with some goat cheese, a little fresh mint on top of your toasts. That sounds awesome. Are you tired of regular boring salads? What are you gonna do with your lettuce or your romaine? A hot bacon and romaine salad with basil buttermilk dressing. So elevate your salads, have fun with your salads. Romaine is a really great base because it's it's got a really nice crunch to it. It's why I prefer to use romaine in a lot of my salads rather than just plain lettuce because those are soft. Um, the salad itself has romaine, tomatoes, and bacon, and you garnish it with basil leaves, homemade croutons, Parmesan cheese, and your basil buttermilk dressing. Sounds awesome. Um, another salad you can do, um, this goes with your arugula or some kale, warm baby kale salad with skillet roasted chickpeas. So that's, I actually do it in my air fryer. You get the chickpeas nice and crispy. They almost, they're almost like little stacking chips. They're amazing. Hey there, um, Licorice is here. She is, she is in the produce bag. Licorice is part of the CSA box this week, I guess. She is in the bag that I brought my produce home in. She is hanging out with us today. Um, so yeah, I get my chickpeas nice and crispy in the air fryer. You can do it in the oven, but this tells you how to do it in the skillet. So it's um, your kale or arugula, and then you do it a warm dressing of garlic, lemon juice, Parmesan, black pepper, olive oil, and you toss in your roasted chickpeas. 
sounds awesome. Then there's also an arugula salad right on the next page, which has orange avocado and a sweet pan drizzle. So again, these salads don't have to be ice cold. This, these have really nice warm elements and it's, it's a great play. You know, we always do plays on textures or flavors, temperatures, play on temperatures makes for an interesting meal as well. So it elevates your salads. We have all of these beautiful greens. We have so much wonderful produce this time of year. So a nice salad, try to change it up, try a warm salad. The next one I have is Magnolia Table by Joanna Gaines. And I think I've got, I've got two in here right now. Let's see. Again, elevate your salad. This is a layered arugula salad and I'll show you the picture so you can see the effect of it. Right in a little trifle dish, big trifle dish. Arugula pairs so well, we're seeing this theme with fruit because of that bitter, peppery toughness. It's so good with the brightness of a fruit. So this pairs pomegranate seeds and pears as well. Um, so the salad has a pear vinaigrette and then you add uh, the arugula, pears, pomegranate, buttered walnuts, which there's a recipe for in here, and it's topped with crumbled blue cheese. And the vinaigrette is just a pear vinegar, minced shallot, salt, Dijon mustard, black pepper, walnut oil, extra virgin olive oil. So I don't love all of her cookbooks because some of the ingredients can seem sort of out of reach and fancy, but do you really need pear vinegar? No, you could do apple cider vinegar. Do you need walnut oil? No, you could use a different type of nut oil or anything like that. It does not need to be walnut oil. Then I think I know what the second recipe was. Um, yes, a bow tie pasta with baby kale and sun-dried tomatoes. So again, if you are not sure what to do with all of your kale now, this is a recipe that is decadent as well because you are using heavy cream and cream cheese and Parmesan cheese to make your cream sauce. You have oil-packed sun-dried tomatoes, a lot, a lot of flavor, and then you have baby kale, or you could use spinach. I know some people also got more spinach this week as well. And you garnish it with some chopped walnuts and chives, and that sounds absolutely delicious. It's hearty, it's warm, wonderful. Sun-dried tomatoes and baby kale, that's awesome. Um, sorry if as the sun goes down, it starts to look a little purple in here. My grow lights are over here. Those of you who came a little over a year ago to the succulent party with Dory, my succulents are still growing. How are yours? Let me know. <laughs> and then the book that we are using today is called Root to Stalk Cooking by Tara Dugan, and it is the art of using the whole vegetable. I talked a little bit about this last week with the Alex Gornicelli recipe for the radishes because we used the radish tops and the radishes. Those radish greens were delicious. We're doing the same thing this week. We are braising our turnip greens and our turnips. So where is the one last week that was a full stir fry? It had a protein in it. This one is just a side dish for me for tonight. Um, and you do soy butter. So it's, um, the whole thing is braised in butter and chicken broth over here, chicken broth, and um, there it is, there's the chicken broth. <laughs> and then you add some soy sauce and dark brown sugar so it kind of gets, um, what does it say, glaze, like a glaze. This is, a, again, another simple recipe, but if you don't know what to do with all of these things, I have never cooked with turnips before. I've cooked with rutabaga before, actually, but not turnips. You know, this is just a simple way to tackle it and enjoy it. The other recipe in here that uses turnips, it's called scraps latkes. So normally you have a latke and it's made with potato, but what about if you have a bunch of root vegetables that you don't know what to do with, or maybe you have some extra pieces, maybe you used a bunch for a recipe and you have a little bit left over. Here, here you go. Um, three cups peeled and grated raw root vegetables or tubers, potatoes, sweet potatoes, beets, carrots, carrots, parsnips, turnips or celery root, your onion, your eggs, cornstarch, salt, pepper, 
um, sour cream and applesauce to serve. So it's just made with all different root vegetables, not just potato. You have a little bit of this, you have a little bit of that, make up a nice crispy little latke. Okay, so I'm gonna move those other cookbooks and I have this one here ready to go. I'm gonna start with um, garlic. I have a big old garlic clove here and I am going to just mince that up because it's going to go into my nice big wok over there to flavor my oil or my butter. And you can see here, I also have leeks. We need leeks for this recipe as well. We're using only the white part, so I've trimmed the green part off. And similar to what I'm doing with the turnips, I gave it a little bit of a soak. Sometimes some, you know, sandy dirt gets in between all of those little ribs. So you want to make sure that you give this a good soak as well. So this whole recipe uses uh, two tablespoons of butter. So we start with half a tablespoon of butter that I will get melted up into my wok. Um, you can see what happens if you are like me and you're using a butter replacement. We'll see how that goes. It's basically just putting oil in the pan. So the flavor will be a little bit different, not as great as butter that gets all cooked up and delicious, but we will make do. All right, put some of that, some of that in there, and then um, my garlic will go in there as well. There is a spot later on where we add more garlic, so I'm not going to put this whole thing, the recipe calls for like three cloves of garlic. Um, this was a very big clove of garlic, so it's probably the equivalent of two, so I'm just kind of cutting it down by one because that's just what I feel like doing. So let me grab my turnip greens, my bountiful amount of turnip greens. So the soy sauce for later. This recipe also calls for star anise, and shockingly, I don't have any, so I will use a little bit of ground cloves, just a little bit because it is strong. Maybe we will do star anise some other time for our spice of the kitchen, right? All right, so. Just start doing this one by one. I'm gonna, whoops, I don't wanna lose a turnip. And if I lose a turnip, it's gonna go right onto Licorice's head. This is not what she signed up for. All right. All right, so it says to just kind of tear up your turnip greens, just kind of loose, doesn't need to be perfect, into just little like one inch strips so you can just tear it up. You do not need to be fancy here. Right, you just kind of take it and rip it. The turnips, because they are still young and small, we do not need to peel them. You will know you need to peel them when they get uh, kind of a, a tough skin on them, but we do not have that right now, so we are all good. There's garlic everywhere. Okay, and then I'm gonna add about half of my garlic so that it goes in now and I will melt my butter. And then once that is all melted and ready, I will put these in there. And remember, you wanna really keep stirring. Anytime we put garlic into our oil like this, we really wanna make sure it doesn't burn. We also wanna kind of keep tossing to make sure that the greens are coated in this hot oil. That's what helps them wilt and get nice and soft. Okay, and we're gonna keep this bowl nearby because once everything is nice and wilted and soft, I'm gonna put the greens back in here so i'll take it out and then we'll cook the turnips and the leeks separately and then we will eventually return the greens back to the wok but we don't want them to get overdone okay so i'm going to like i said i'm going to use my tongs here and i'm going to make sure everything is really coated in that melted butter you can see i still have my melted butter left i also have some brown sugar for the end there with the soy sauce but I want everything to be coated and we're going to just get this tender and wilted down. In the meantime, I will go ahead and quarter up my turnips and get them ready next. Okay, so now we're going to put my garlic, the rest of my garlic into this bowl, which is the second half of our cook here. And we are going to cut our turnips. I'm actually 
actually might cut them a little smaller. All right. I'm gonna finish this one and go give my greens and garlic a little toss just to make sure nothing is burning. All right, all good. So I'm gonna finish chopping my turnips. Okay, now to thinly slice up my leeks. skills. Don't judge me. I am a librarian and not a chef. Okay, okay so I'm going to go make the swap. I'm going to add some more butter to the pan. Add the leeks. And the cloves as well. If you're using star anise, you add your star anise right now. I'm going to add my turnips as well. Oh, I can smell that clove. All right. Stir to get everything covered and coated. I do need to add a little more butter. So with the butter alternative, it's just not as oily, so I need a little bit more. smell the leeks and the clove together are such an interesting combination. I've got some here that's, there we go, unwind it. All right, now's the time to season with some salt. I'm using a coarse salt because we're about to add our stock. Of course, I used a low sodium stock. Um, they also recommend uh, like a homemade vegetable stock. I think there's a recipe in this book for uh, like a leftover vegetable kind of scrap stock. You can do so much with whatever you have left over. So we're going to add the stock to this next. Okay, stir, make sure everything is, make sure everything is nice and combined. And then I'm going to cover this up and let this simmer partially covered for a little while. Everything's going to start to get nice and soft and cook down. The liquid's going to reduce a little bit, which is exactly what we want. Okay, so these have been simmering here. My liquid has reduced a little bit. And how do we know that we're ready for the soy sauce and the dark brown sugar and the greens to come back? We are fork tender. There's really no resistance. Just on that side. Shh. Okay, there we go. Nice, nice and tender and easy. Keep flipping to make sure that you're you're tender all the way through. We're still gonna cook for a couple more minutes, so it's totally okay. Right, like this one is that one's pretty good. That one's good, right? Nice and fork tender. So we're ready to move on. Okay. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna sprinkle in my brown sugar. I'm gonna break up any clumps that I might have with my fingers, just to make it go a little faster, a little easier. And this will continue to cook down. We'll lose some more liquid. It'll be, like I said before, more of a glaze. And that will be the point when we return our greens back to it so it can get coated. Let's just sprinkle it all over evenly. It's only uh, about a tablespoon or so. Same for the soy sauce. Mix it all through and let this come back to a simmer. everything will be nice and coated because as I keep saying it'll be more of a glaze so that'll be really great so with the brown sugar we've got that molasses flavor that dark brown sugar and we've got the sweet with the umami of the soy sauce we also had the cloves or the star anise for complexity and then of course the, the leeks and the garlic are also great aromatics Here we go, so we're gonna continue to let this cook down even further. Okay, a lot of my liquid has cooked out. It's kind of coating everything. It's not a thick glaze, but it is sort of glazy. It does say in the recipe book, it does say sort of a thin glaze, right? And there'll be just enough liquid in here now to coat the greens when I put them back in. Okay, so here they go. They're gonna go back in. I'm gonna spread it all out and make sure that everything is coated. I think these greens are gonna soak up what's last of this wonderful liquid. There were one or two times where I kind of tasted what was on my spatula to see how my seasoning was, and I added some salt one of those times. As your liquid reduces, your flavors become more concentrated, but you do want to still make sure that you have enough seasoning especially of your salt. Okay, so see this is all, all this, the last of this liquid is kind of sitting in between all the nooks and crannies of the greens and the turnips. Just make sure everything's evenly distributed. All right, so I'm going to put this back into its bowl and we're gonna serve it right on up while it's nice and warm with this glaze. And that will be it. Okay, so that is it. I'm going to dig in. I'm gonna try a little bit of the greens first and then I'll go in for a turnip. Mm. It's kind of like a broccoli rob, but a little less bitter than a broccoli rob with almost the flavor of a spinach. Like if you combine broccoli rob and spinach together, that's exactly what's going on here. I do think I need a little bit more salt, so I'm gonna toss on some, I'm gonna toss on some soy sauce. Just to keep in with the flavor that we we created here. Right, so that was just about half a tablespoon. I'm just gonna toss, toss. Mm. Very good. All right, I'm gonna go in for turnip. With these turnips are now super, super soft. They're just, my fork is going right into them like a soft potato. Let's see how this is. 
That's really good. These turnips have really soaked up a lot of the flavor. They're super soft. They are similar to a potato, but they've got a little pizzazz to them, but they're not as biting as a radish. They are delicious. And I can taste the brown sugar and the soy sauce together, a really nice combination. The clove is not very strong anymore, but it does create an overall harmony and a little bit of warmth and the, the leeks and garlic are there as well, kind of in the background. This is delicious. Mm. Those greens are so good with this whole sauce situation. So good. Wow, this is an awesome dish. I hope that you give it a try. This is gonna be a great dinner. I'll serve it up with some, well, probably chicken, but it would be great with anything. Actually, it'd probably be really great with sausage, but I will serve it up with chicken because that's what I have already cooked. All right, so that is it for this week, week two of our CSA box. And this was Root to Stock Cooking. It will be back at the library by the time you see this video. <laughs> So if you're interested in any of the cookbooks or the spice recipes for dill, if you have a lot of dill or anything that is there, check it all out. I'm gonna put lots of stuff in the description to this video so you can have some nice resources. And of course, feel free to come on into the library and browse our cookbook section. The bro lights just went off, the succulents are going to bed and I'm gonna have my dinner. Okay, <laughs> that's it everyone. I will see you next week. Bye.